Hi everyone, my name is Reiko. Um, today I will be covering uh, design pa a brief in introduction about design patterns for my tech talk. Oh shit. Okay. Um, so this is the agenda for today. I will first define what design pattern is. I will talk about why is it important for us developers to know about know about uh, design patterns, and we, I will talk about the categories of design patterns. And last, we'll, I will dive into some um, application of these uh, design patterns. So this is the definition. I'm going to read it word by word. Um, a design pattern names, abstracts, and identifies the key aspect of a common design structure that make it useful for, like, at this point, we've been wondering, like, what are design patterns? Like, like, is it, like isn't it make it, like, make your uh, app appearance look prettier? It's actually not. It's actually the exact opposite. Um, I have the same question as you guys, because when I started, um, I thought it's about appearances, but when I, Dig deeper, it's actually the ex exact opposite. It's about um, code stru structures. As you can see here, it's, it talks about reusable uh, object oriented design. It talks about um, programming languages and implementations. So let's take a look at a simpler um, uh, definition of uh, design pattern. So it's a general reusable and re repeatable solutions for a common recurring problem in object oriented design, software design. Um, it's not a direct translation into code, so it's not a direct solution, but it's, the, the, the other way to look at it is that it's a template or a description of how a specific problem can be solved uh, step by step. So it can apply it across different situations. And design patterns are not language specific, so um, it's, uh, you can use it in Java or JavaScript, and et cetera. So let's take a look at a brief history of how design patterns came to, come to life. So um, it can be traced back to an, um, by an early work for, uh, by, by an architect named Christopher Alexander. Um, he wrote a lot about uh, uh, design issues uh, on um, buildings, on towers, like how using less materials can uh, and build a better foundation for uh, buildings. And, um, and Somehow he discovered that uh, certain design pattern, like when, when you use again and again, can, uh, can achieve optimal effect for a building. So um, he wrote a book about uh, design pattern. It's called Pattern Language back in the 70s. And, and in the 70s, uh, software development started to gain momentum. So um, the uh, software engineers started to incorporate uh, Alexander's uh, principles uh, to teach uh, beginner uh, developers uh, to, to, to strengthen their uh, programming skills. And there's actually a book published in 1995 that talks about design patterns uh, by the Gang of Four. It's called Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. Um, so why is it important for uh, us software developers to have a strong working knowledge of design pattern? There's three main benefits. Um, they are proven, um, they are reusable, and they are expressive. First, proven. So these are the uh, approaches and proven techniques that reflect experiences and, and insights of a community of developers to help define them and bring them to life. So they are, uh, they, uh, these, are the, like, these patterns are the optimized solutions for certain problems. Um, they are highly reusable. They help improve uh, our code structure. Uh, because we have, uh, we, have, we have confidence that we can rely on these patterns. And these, allows us to, uh, these patterns allow us to actually uh, spend less time worrying about the, our code, the, the structure of our code and spend more time focused on the bigger picture of the overall solutions, the quality of it, the design of it. And it actually prevents uh, mining issues that cause a lot of big problems. And it also um, encourages us to use more dry code to look more deeply into areas of our solutions where we can reduce repetitions. And um, these type patterns are expressive. So um, usually in a workplace when we work with uh, like established projects, we have to dive in, into like a really large code base. And design pattern actually help you uh, help to improve code re re readability and help you uh, simplifies the learning process of, of, the, the, of other developers that, that use your program. And it actually speeds up the communication process because it provides us with a set of structure and vocabularies to use. 
And these actually accelerate the whole development process. So um, what are the categories of design pattern? So there are three main uh, type. There are creational, there are structural, and there are uh, beha behavioral. And there's actually uh, 23 design patterns that are used, um, often used by developers nowadays that is written on the book uh, by uh, the Baguette Gang of Four. So here they are. And as you can see, there's a class uh, thing, but then JavaScript is a class's language. So, um, but then JavaScript, we can use uh, functions to simulate class, so it, it's possible to use uh, these patterns. So first of all, we'll talk about creational design patterns. So uh, creational design pattern focus on um, how to best optimize uh, by creating, uh, how to create an object by op optimizing the creation process. So um, uh, for example, a uh, constructor function that is all we're all really familiar with, but then it's not optimized because whenever we create a new instance for the car constructor, um, uh, we will also copy the methods uh, inside the constructor, which is not really efficient. The more optimized way is using the prototype uh, design pattern. Um, this is we, we all use uh, every day, kind of. And instead of like uh, redefining and copying the entire methods inside a constructor, we're actually passing by reference. So then it actually uh, improved the performance of our code. The other uh, creational design pattern I want to talk about is singleton. So it restricts the creation of, one, uh, of, the cl of a class by using only one object. So um, it provides just one global access point for all the functions that want to receive uh, these, uh, the, the stuff that we want to receive from the object. So one of the uh, uh, prominent example that we always use, we always use uh, Singleton is uh, the, re the Redux um, uh, app. Uh, the app. Uh, so basically, it's, it provides a single source of truth where you can get everything from the store. Whenever uh, the functions or components want to get uh, uh, the stuff from um, that one object, the pros is that we can always go to that one place to look for the state or changes that we want to make. And it actually speed up a lot of uh, pr uh, the process because we, we can, we're just going to one place, so we don't have to jiggle around to go to different objects. But it can prove to be really difficult to test, so because you don't know uh, where you are, uh, the, the, uh, the, the single object won't know where to uh, send out these, uh, these functions because uh, they, won't any, they won't know anything about the observers. Um, the second uh, kind is the structural design pattern. Uh, it concerns with how to best manage the, re the, re the relationship between different objects, uh, the building blocks of it, and how they support each other. Some examples are decorator, uh, facade, flyweight, adapter, and proxy. So facade. Um, so how it works is that it provides a unified interface for user for us to interact with. But behind the scene, there's a lot of complicated, complicated actions that are actually happening that we didn't know. So let's say um, we, we, we were an example. So when I withdraw 50 bucks from a bank, uh, we won't know that it is checking uh, if the account is valid. We won't know if it's checking the security code is valid. We won't, we won't know if it's checking the funds are avail available. These are all done behind the scene because um, just to sim just sim 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 simplify it, uh, how we interact with the function, the, the function we need. So one example is jQuery. So as you can see, uh, here we use the document.ready. Uh, so behind the scene, there's actually a lot of methods happening. And bindready is one of the methods that, that helps uh, uh, run this line, document.ready, to, to, to make sure uh, jQuery runs smoothly. So facade, there's, uh, the pros and cons is that like, it reduces API foot footprints, so then you will write less code in your program. And the cause is that like, when, you, when you use actually, for example, jQuery, right? when, you get, uh, when you use uh, get element by ID, it's actually a lot faster than simply using jQuery uh, syntax. 
But, but the jQuery team uh, they did a really good job in balancing how uh, the program worked together, so uh, it works well for, well, well for them. The last one is um, behavioral design pattern. It helps to stream, streamline the communication between different objects so then it's not as about how they work together and how they receive uh, each other's uh, 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 parameters, functions, and objects. So one prominent ex example is uh, command, chain of responsibility, iterator, observer, mediator. The one I'm going to talk about today is uh, observer. So the object, the subject, is the publisher. I maintain a list of uh, dependents, which are the subscribers. And whenever a state change, when something changed, it would automatically uh, 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 notify uh, the observers, the subscribers. So it's a one-to-many relationship. One example is also Redux, the connect methods, which allows these uh, observers to uh, instantly connect with the, the store that we were getting our state from. And whenever the state changes, I automatically update our components to re-render the uh, the whole um, XGML. So the, the pros is that is uh, is really consistent. We always get all the state from one place, and publisher doesn't need to know anything about the observer. But the bad thing is that uh, the observer are ignorant of how the, the existence of, of each other. So like a navbar won't know a navbar component won't know about the footer of components and like that. So. Uh, the problem about uh, design pattern is that uh, some of the design patterns target a wrong problem, so it's not making them more efficient. And a lot of uh, people are saying that it lacks the formal uh, foundation, so there's not a lot of, a lot of uh, literature surrounding um, design patterns. And often, uh, if you're not proficient with design patterns, it can lead to inefficient sol solutions because you apply the wrong patterns into the wrong place. And uh, this is just a brief in introduction of design patterns. There's a lot in design pattern that we can, we can, we can explore about, uh, how, like how to write a, a design pattern. And any pattern means that like uh, bad practices in terms of writing code. And these are the resources that I used. Thank you very much.